Hello there, I am live, yeah. And I just got some copies of my book, the, my newest book, Working the Courts of Heaven, Seeing Angels in the Sky, book number four. And I'll have no makeup on because I just came from public skate, ice skating for an hour and a half. So I don't have no makeup on, so I know, excuse my looks. Um, so this is my newest book, it just came yesterday. Working the Course of Heaven, Seeing Angels in the Sky, Book 4. And I am going to talk about some things that are in this book and share a little bit of some of my experiences. But on the other hand, I'm talking about angels. Um, the book right before, one of my other books is Commanding Your Angels. That's a good book to get to go with this book because it tells you how to command your angels and why you can. And this is a sticky note because this book and this book are going to go to Debbie... Deborah Sweeten today to get on the Deborah Sweeten show, which we're going to do and I'm going to get on in um, fall, but hoping sooner. Okay, so anyway, um, one of the things I really fought against with the courts of heaven is the fact that my thought process was, and this might be yours too, was, um, okay, the blood of Jesus covers everything, so why do I have to go to the courts of heaven? Uh, what, what, how does the new covenant and the kingdom of God fit in with going to the courts of heaven? And what God showed me was everything that Jesus did and bought and paid for, it has to be accessed. So we don't, we aren't automatically saved. We're only saved when we believe that Jesus died for our sins and we receive that free gift of him paying for our sins. We're only, we're healed when we believe that um, that by the stripes of Jesus we have been healed or somebody comes along that has faith for us to be healed so everything has to be accessed now as far as God's concerned he sees us holy blameless and above reproach uh, we didn't get saved by our behavior we don't get unsaved by our behavior we're saved according to um, believing that Jesus paid the price for our sins so the same thing with healing we we take it by faith and the same thing with the courts of heaven it's by faith um, so Satan is looking for a loophole a legal loophole in which he can accuse us in the courts of heaven now if you look at Terry Spencer's stuff Eon Clayton um, uh, somebody Abraham Abram I forgot his last name or first name and a couple other people they talk about the courts of heaven but I always thought, okay, now how does this relate to the new covenant? And and then God showed me about that. We have to access it. As far as God's concerned, we're holy, blameless, and above reproach. We shouldn't have to go to court. But as far as the devil is concerned, he finds legal loopholes in our past and takes us to court. And you can study the court and how that happens in the old covenant because there's lots of samples there. And there's and God showed me one thing when I was questioning how does this fit into the new covenant how does this fit into the kingdom because I teach on the kingdom and that's our new covenant and he said do this I was gonna write a book about this but I didn't maybe you can he said look up every legal term that you can find in the Bible and I was amazed the whole new covenant the whole New Testament is all legal terms binding and loosening is a legal term that you do in heaven it's not all this time and all the in church history and everything we always says I bind you Satan in Jesus name that's not what it's all about it's about going to court binding and loosening the keys to heaven is about going to court um, if you if uh, I ask God to give me a whole list of um, legal terms that we you that are really about going to the courts of heaven and not just prayer on earth if you find in your life that you're praying for something, you're praying and praying, you're declaring, you're decreeing, you're pleading the blood, and you're doing all this stuff and nothing happens, is because you have a court case. That uh, the devil has something against you and has appeared in court. He brought this case against you. And there's lots of scriptures. I'm not, I, I don't go over that. I keep it really simple because I want a kid to be able to do this. Okay, I want to keep it really simple uh, in my book. And, and so... Um, I got sidetracked, so if somebody ever, when I get sidetracked, if you guys want to remind me where I'm at, Justin Abraham, that's the other guy, yeah, remind me where I'm at, then I won't go on these rabbit trails. And so I totally forgot what I was talking about, um, the old and new covenant. Okay, oh, God told me to make a list of all the legal terms, binding and loosening, pleading the blood, those are all legal terms. So go through them, um, 
New Testament, find all the legal terms, put them all together, and what they are is talking about the courts of heaven and how we're to go to the courts of heaven. And you will find that when you learn to go to the courts of heaven, that everything in your life will become much easier. It is amazing how how uh, history, hist <laughs> thank you for all those hearts, history is not repeated. And a history of bad curses and, and generational curses, is, is it stops because you went to heaven and uh, pled your case in heaven. Uh, we can we can bind things on earth and but it, it's all about going to the courts of heaven so so with all that said let me kind of go over here go over the over my newest book and um, the reason I God showed me to keep it with the angels is because when you see pictures of the angels in the sky and and a lot of them are you know basically what they are is imprints like if you suck your finger your face in those those nail things that you know and it leaves an imprint those really cool things or if you put your hand in the sand and take it away there's an imprint well oftentimes we see in the sky things but as kids we're told it's our imagination but it's not it's really the host of heaven so when you see um, things in the sky uh, they're becoming more and more obvious it's the host of heaven and they don't always look like us they do warring and fighting they're warriors they look fierce and tough and that's the reason I have the host of heaven here is because God said that it builds people's faith to trust their imagination because the imagination is God's tool to the spirit realm. And the spirit realm belongs to the Christians, not the cult, not the um, cult or occult. It belongs to Christians. They have stolen it, hijacked it, and twisted it. It belongs to us because God created all things and it's good. Okay, so... So he said, when you put pictures of the host of heaven in there, it builds up people's faith. And they'll look up and they'll know, and they'll think of the courts of heaven and they'll think of the angels and, and God. And we're not worshiping the angels. We are worshiping God and loving his creation. Like we love our dog, our cat, and our kids. We can love angels too. We're not worshiping them. Okay. So there are pictures and they're basically, some of them are like imprints, like an angel a host of heaven might have been there. The host of heaven uses the camouflage of the skies because they're in high places. And they use the camouflage of the skies like our earth is a copy of heaven. And on earth, when our army goes to war, they are dressed in camouflage. And they're the, if they're in the desert, they're camouflaged in the desert stuff. If they're in the jungle, they're camouflaged in jungle. Well, the host of heaven is our army. If you read Ephesians uh, 6 and 2 Corinthians Something that talks about the host of heaven are ministering spirits sent to minister to us, heirs of salvation. They aren't for God, they're for us. And so they camouflage themselves in the sky to see what's going on, to wait for directions from us, to wait for us to speak the word of God, and to command and send them out. And they're camouflaged from the enemies. They're also watching the enemy and what the enemy is doing. And in these end times now, they're going to become more and more obvious and more and more normal. And we're going to be capturing them. So the pictures in my books are actually imprints or the actual hosts themselves in the sky using the sky as camouflage and that's why they're in this kind of a book so um, in the beginning of the book here I talk about why uh, the clouds and why the pictures in the sky and I talk about our covenant of promise and the new covenant and then one of the things I talk about that God told me to share was our DNA because oftentimes well the whole thing about going to the courts of heaven is Satan will find a legal loophole in order to get in and take us to the court of heaven. Now, like I said, earth is a copy of heaven. Our courts are a copy of what someone at some point of time saw in a vision of heaven or understood of, of, of heaven, our court system. So um, what Satan does on earth, if we have been sent to appear in court because we did something wrong and we don't show up, we go to jail. Okay, so in heaven, Satan is accusing us, is accusing the brethren day and night. And that's just not no fancy little saying. It's the truth. He's going up to God and he's saying, hey, they did this, they did this. You can't give them what you promised them because they did this. And if you don't appear in the courts of heaven to plead the blood of Jesus, then Satan has won. So anytime something's not working in your life or you have a, a, a repeated history of something bad happen, most likely it's because Satan has appeared in the courts of heaven 
and is withholding something from you because he found a legal foothold. So, how does he find a legal foothold? What is a legal foothold? Okay, remember, you have to apply the blood of Jesus to everything. You have to... Um, um, God doesn't want us to go around and repent of sin because if we don't repent of sin, we're going to hell. He wants us not to sin and to repent of sin because when we don't repent of the mess ups that we do, it allows the devil to get a foothold in, in us. It also hardens our heart to sin and it also is a legal way that he can take us to court. So repenting has become a lot of fun. Okay, now we might not be, we are not Jewish, all of us, by birth, but we are by our DNA. If you go back through your history line, and I've been able to go back to the like 1500s in some of my history line, my history takes me back to German, and uh, actually my on my dad's side of the family, my dad's side of the family all the way back was the originator of the... Joseph Smith of the, not the Quakers, the, some cult. It's, it's the cult, if anybody knows what that cult is. Anyway, so I've gotten back that far in my history. So every time somebody is born, half of their mother's, D, half of their DNA is their mother's and half is their father's. And in that DNA record is everything that their parent has done until that time in history. And everything their parent has done, their parents their parents, their parents, their parents, all the way back to Adam. So within our DNA, even though we may not be Jewish and have not broken the Jewish law and we are not under the old covenant, somewhere in our history, we most likely have the DNA history of Jewish covenant and most likely broken. So that is through the DNA is one way that Satan finds loopholes. Um, there could be um, trauma in perhaps your great 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 grandmother had an, a, a, an abortion and felt guilty and never repented of it felt it was okay uh, that she didn't do anything wrong and and then you have a history of miscarriages or abortions or uh, deformities or something that is a generational curse because of one person's sin that wasn't re re repented of that Satan found. Um, so that's why you have um, deliverance ministry. Deliverance ministry is basically the step before courts of heaven. Deliverance ministry is going back in, in your history. And, oh, my husband's here. He's almost done. So I'm going to have to finish up. Um, deliverance ministry is going back in your history and um, talking about uh, the things that the, the sins of the of uh, your fathers and forefathers and so on but when you go to court to heaven it's even it's even deeper and 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 a step bigger so in the book i talk about um and i can't cover it all now especially since my husband's here and where I, uh he's uh visiting something and has to take care of something i talk about the dna and then i talk about the covenant in the jewish law like i just did and unrepentant sins and curses and um, so on and then I want to go over this really quickly first of all if the devil cannot find any unrepentant sin in your life he'll go into your generation he'll go back in your DNA he'll go back in your history and try to find something to throw at you um, into your ancestors and the best way to keep him at bay is to repent whenever you feel the Holy Spirit leading you that you did something wrong uh, and close that door because it's just not worth it and you want to be able to show up in court every time the devil wants to take you to court. So this is basically the method that um, I learned and that I put together that God showed me easy steps how to go to the court to heaven. Uh, number one, you have to use your imagination and allow the Holy Spirit and trust that the Holy Spirit in you, you're one spirit with a spirit, that he is directing and teaching you. And don't think of anything as being oh that's just made up in my mind write things down and go back to it later and trust the Holy Spirit okay so you say usually say something like oh, father um, in Jesus name I want to go to the courts of heaven I go through the door of Jesus uh, I want to know what the, the enemy has an accusation against me because this this is happening and I want to go to the courts of heaven and clear this up okay 
So you use your imagination and um, they'll, you might see something, you might hear something, you might not. And then you just acknowledge the, uh, the people, that are the, the spirits that are there, the uh, cloud of witnesses, the, the hosts from heaven uh, that are witnesses. You thank you, you know, you honor the judge and uh, suggest that they be seated. Uh, the books are open next. You ask uh, the God, which is the judge, to open the books. And uh, you all have a destiny book, and the Bible talks about that. I don't write about that, but you can go to other books about the courts of heaven and and uh, and learn more about that. I tried to keep it simple, but we all have a destiny because God, God is an author. He's the author and finisher of our faith. And he created a story for us, a destiny for us, and everything in it is good. And so we don't want to start doing something that's not our destiny because it's a waste of time and it's not be successful and we won't enjoy it so we ask that uh, he opens the record the book of our destiny and so on and then we state our case okay what's the problem okay I have this keeps happening I pray about it and this keeps happening and I don't understand why um, and then we, we say okay and I know that I'm supposed to be healed or have financial success or whatever and then you say, I want to know what I'm accused of that is stopping this from happening. You, you say, I want the accuser to reveal and to state what I'm being accused of that is causing this problem. And then the witnesses are brought forth for you or against you. And, and then after that happens, then you plead, uh, always, always agree with your adversary. Always say, yes, Father. Um, I am guilty of that. I repent of that. I ask you to forgive me of that. And I ask that you apply the blood of Jesus to that situation. Okay, then, and then uh, he'll, sometimes I'll hear like, okay, you're divorced from that, uh, from that spirit. Or I'll hear um, uh, innocent and uh, like the gravel, the gavel drop. And then um, he gives his verdict. And then after that, I, I usually say, uh, Father, can you please give that verdict to uh, an angel to enforce on earth and one time the angel that he gave it to I, I went because <gasps> I recognized that angel it was one of my angels he kind of looks like a dinosaur his skin's like in like patches like rocks and and he took that and went to earth to enforce that and and then um, the ver verdict's written and, and I say you know can he enforce on earth and then I thank the judge or whatever and then I, I leave by faith I I you know come back to earth or you know just stop thinking about it whatever and I go go about my business and if that situation comes up again then I'll say father I want to go to court right now because the devil is harassing me he's in contempt of court um, you said he was uh, I was innocent and so I'm gonna to go to court again and I'll go to court again and you just repeat those steps um, and, and sometimes if you, before you even go to the court of heaven, you might, I have some other instructions that you can uh, do here, but you might want to just lay on your bed in privacy of your room and say, just ask God to take you through periods of your life and start repenting of things that pop up and that can save you time. And because the first time you go to court of heaven, I mean, the accusations against you might be an hour long, uh, the first time or two because there's so much of a history that hasn't been repented of or acknowledged. But if you just lay on your bed and you just go through your life and think of things and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal things to you, it'll be like onions and layers of onions peeled off. And when you go to courts of heaven, things will happen faster. And each time you repent of sins, um, it, will, it will happen faster and faster. And sometimes when you're in the courts of heaven, you'll, you'll see, experience different things. Always write them down. And, and, and keep a journal and trust your imagination because your imagination like I said is is the key to the spirit realm the kingdom realm our realm we are spirit beings we have a body and we have a soul so um, get this book it's very simple um, Terry um, I think it, I don't even know oh I don't know if it's in here or not but I do have an endorsement from the courts of heaven from um, from Terry Terry Spencer uh, Spencer yeah Terry Spencer I have an endorsement from him I don't know if it's in the books or not uh, but I have to get it in if it isn't but I'm not ready to republish it right now because it's a hot item <laughs> I don't like to republish and correct my books uh, when when they're in the top 100 and it's I'm excited because most of my uh, books on the, seeing the angels in the sky and the host of heaven 
um, paper books, print books, are in the top 500, and I've never, I have written over four dozen books, and never have my print books been in the top 100. My Kindle books are all, oftentimes, about a third of them are always in the top 100, um, but, so this is really exciting, so I don't want to, I know there's mistakes in it, um, but I'm not ready to correct that till it's not yeah. such a hot item. So anyway, um, just wanted to share that with you. Um, I hope you enjoy your experiences that you have in the courts of heaven. It is life changing. If you can go through deliverance ministry before that, that would speed things up. That would help things um, and be a blessing to you. And my name is Robin Bremer dot net is my website. If you just type uh, Robin Bremer on the internet, about the 10, 15, 20, 30 pages, you know, are about me because I do a lot of internet stuff. Um, get my books, share this video with your friends and on your social media sites if it's been a blessing to you. If you have a question or comment, uh, make sure you write Robin Bremer because I it gets passed around so much and with like 1K hits on it, I can't go back and, and read your comments because they're lost in all the other comments. Um, and so hopefully this has helped you. Hopefully it has encouraged you and motivated you to go to the courts of heaven because it truly is another step up and it is life-changing. So love you all guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.